gathered here today to honor the women of Sierra Leone. We're gathered here today because the women want us here. When, in 2000, Rajiv Bendu, in collaboration with the women of Sierra Leone, decided to create an organization known as the 50-50, it was not to invoke rivalry. It was not to bring about rancor. It was to ensure that there was equilibrium because that's how it must be. And that is why today, 14 years later, it looks like when the women speak, people listen. It is time for the woman's voice to be heard. 50-50 is a household name. But in spite of the various politicians, the majority of Sanguinians do understand that we are advocating for gender justice. Even as we focus on women's political participation and leadership, we take a holistic approach to women's empowerment and reach out to and advocate for women of all walks of life. That is why today you'll find us in the Radisson Blue, celebrating I Should Answer. And tomorrow you will find us in the Cup Barry in the remotest area in Sierra Leone, training and encouraging women for leadership and participation. It has not been an easy task for us, but we are determined and committed to see more women in leadership. The very support of all of you present here today will go a long way to contributing to the struggle for gender justice in Sierra Leone. As in many other developing countries, the status of women in Sierra Leone is immersed in deep cultural discrimination by traditional customs and laws which must be overcome for us to reach real gender equality. In Sierra Leone, as a nation, we can boast of two substantive ministers, one minister of state, vice president's office, five deputy ministers, parliamentarians, over ten heads of pair of states that are all women, three AIG, the mayor of McKinney, Paramount Chiefs, and so many more Sierra women who every day stand at the front line of our fight to change these horrible statistics. We cannot afford to be silent on the things that matter to us as women because we are a part of the plight of every woman in this country. From Kono to Kainau, it is our business. It is our responsibility. We must continue to trailblaze, and yes, we must continue to break glass ceilings. We must be willing to push and go to our edges. But we also must be willing to live as we climb. Ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome a wonderful evening. Look forward to something different and pleasurable ahead, and I look forward to steering the ship. Thank you so much. I would actually like now like to introduce the founder and first president of the 5050 Group, Dr. Nimata Rajay Walker. Let's give her a warm, warm, warm. I think it is important that we define what the 50 group is all about before we get on to the education. And I will do that by sharing you 28 slides. And I won't do it in six minutes. I'll do my best. The first slide you see is the goal objective, the, the one prior to. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the to the start to the part of the program here. Uh, looking forward to the woman of the hour, yes. Madam, or should I say, Lady Aisha Johansson. Aisha Johansson is Sierra Leone's first female football association <laughs> president, and is the only female FA president in the world. Um, I was told that that Blacker, president of uh, the FIFA, actually called Madam Johansson 
um, during the introduction of the World Cup in Brazil, and they gave her a standing ovation. A woman from Sierra Leone is blazing the trail.
Um, and, uh, a lot of us sort of said, um, for me, that the for me it's about the product. It's about having fair share of everything and being on top and being given the same opportunity as a male counterpart um, across the sector, not just some types of things, but all types of things. Okay. Um, feminism actually is about recognizing male privilege and doing something about it. And, <laughs> and how do you recognize male privilege? That's one thing. And people do not even understand that men have privilege just for being men. So you need to recognize that first and then start doing something about it. Thank you. Anyone else to ask? Um, I'd like to um, agree with Manja and with you because I think that um, feminism is a word of the past because of women like you and like Aisha and other great women in Serbia and in the rest of the world. I think now we're, we're in a new on an equal part and we don't need to consider ourselves feminist anymore because of these things. I think the decision-making level, whether it's the presidency or the ministerial or the judiciary or the legislature, we need to be there in our moments with the confidence that we can lead. But for me, it's about equality first. And it's about being humans as much as a feminist. You know, so if, I, if I'm a feminist, I believe in equal rights for people with disabilities, with different race, different ethnic background, religion and so on. On the, you know, the decision-making side, we need to be there at the top. We're going to have to be there in all parts of decision-making at that senior level. I agree thoroughly. I just also think it's important that it cascades down through society. In addition to that, so let's talk, let's talk about women in leadership, women in leadership roles, and how do we get even a seat at the table? There are women in this audience right now thinking, wow, I, I want to do that. I, I want to be a part of making a change. I want to start unraveling those structures. How? How? where we start thinking we're not the underdogs anymore. That we, 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 we accept that we are equal to men. That's the beginning. That's where we start to train our children to think, yes, I can do it, of course, it doesn't matter that I hope. I don't have to be a feminist, I just have to be a person. And an objective, intelligent, and a hard person. And I'll make it. And that's my opinion. Are there any? Are there any? The kind of leadership we want is a different kind of leadership. For me, the leadership that I see in men, I don't admire because that's power over other people. I don't want to have power over people, I want to have power with people. Because when you have power with people, they take you to where you want to go. They don't leave you back. They're there with you throughout the process. So women have to plan to create the kind of leadership that people will admire. Not to do the kind of dark leadership that's in existence already that we as feminists are condemning already. So you go in there, you become another man, another voice in that Um I surround myself a lot with men because I really don't think all women think like me. And to challenge certain structures, you have to think the way that people are thinking to be able to understand their self-concept about the issues that you want to challenge them. And breaking those structures, what you need to also do is to bring forward your perspective in a non-confrontational manner so that they can understand. Change doesn't happen by actually imposing it to people. You need to let them understand and own the process of change. So in the context of Sierra Leone, I believe that we need to look at the structures as Dr. Aisha said. Women leadership, uh, of how many the, the, the equality, yes, equal rights to access and possibility. Equal, and I guess this is what we're saying, right? Equal rights to access the possibility to apply, to, to, to do what a man would want to do, and do you understand? And, and be judged on merit. I honestly do not. 
he, he really needs to be careful there, and this is why I, I hasten to add, why I said this in my, my speech, I have never played the gender card. Mm -hmm. Everything that I've earned, and everything that I am, that, that all the attributes that, that, that you can attach to me based on merit. It's all merit. And that is why, even with the election, you had those, oh, manifesto, make me talking manifesto, make pulling manifesto. Big dreams don't need big thoughts. You got a big dream, would you do it? My deeds were there. I had a legacy. So if, if you know, if we women, those who truly, truly deserve and they earned it, they should be given the opportunity, yes. And we should nurture that. But it isn't because you're a woman. And, and so we, we must be. So I, I just wanted to add that. Give the audience an opportunity to chime in and to add comments or questions that you might have. Yes. Thank you very much, Geneva. I really want um, to appreciate everybody who's here. I want to thank Aisha and the panelists. I think it's been a really wonderful evening, and I thank you for the courage to do it even during the month of Ramadan. Um, and what I want to say is that. Um, I just want to add to the, um, what has been said about feminism, from, especially from Aisha Fofana, about, I think what is, one of the things that is key to um, understanding uh, feminism is about realizing that it is, about, it is as much about, it is about how you confront male power. And that it's about wanting a radical and new type of society completely. So that you, you, you can say, you, you can live in a world in which you use male strategies and male methodologies, but you are not going to transform the society. And if we don't transform the society, it's still going to be a very unhappy place for the vast majority of people. I look at the panel in front of me, and I believe apart from Randa, everybody sat there is either in a non-profit organization or in the public sector. Um, my experience in Sierra Leone, from the private sector point of view, is there are some women in leadership roles, in supportive leadership roles, be it HR, marketing, accounting. I don't know too many women who were MDs, who were CEOs in the private sector. I understand the fight 50-50 trying to do in terms of public service or public areas, but I think that same attention needs to be given to the private sector, which is not being done. Sweet Sierra Leone